What's up everybody? Jared here. So I have been in Finland for about two weeks now and I've only recently gotten over jet lag. Um, anyway, I wanted to share some insights that I've had after living here for a little bit and granted my experience has been somewhat limited. But one thing that I've noticed that I think is an interesting contrast to life in America is that retail workers and Uber drivers, they perform their jobs with a level of dignity that is actually quite inspiring. And now granted, a lot of this is because these people can raise a family, buy a home, put their kids through college all the way up to level of a PhD with a job like an Uber driver or a, uh, a hardware store employee, for example. People really take pride in these jobs and they should. These are positions of honor, really. I mean, this is like very valuable labor. Now contrast that with people who perform these jobs in the U.S. and you get the feeling that they perform it with a little bit more cynicism because they think of it as just a transitional job or they perform it with outright resentment because at some level they kind of know that they're being exploited. And it's just palpable the difference but when you're dealing with somebody who's very proud of their work versus somebody who is just dreaming of whatever their next step is and just thinking of their current job as a stepping stone towards a greater future. Now, of course, the usual response to this is, well, their labor doesn't produce enough to justify the benefits that they receive or the salary that they receive. And I understand this argument, but I guess I would counter that by saying, look, I just spent the last 10 years working in YouTube or digital media, if you will, and I can tell you that, uh, Probably about 30 to 40% of jobs at Facebook and Google, high paying jobs, jobs that even command six figure salaries, are complete bullshit jobs. I would even go as far as to say that a lot of these jobs are just glorified corporate tax write offs. I mean, they don't do anything. They basically just perform misery in order to pretend like they're busy. I remember I was at, uh, and I hope that Google doesn't. Uh, give me a strike for talking about this, but, you know, in my YouTube career, I was invited to this thing called EduCon, where it was basically all the educational YouTubers would come together and uh, we would basically eat from the trash can of ideology as Google convinced us how magnanimous they were and how they were making the better place by empowering us educators to make a difference in the world. It was a lot of bullshit. The whole event was kind of a sham. I remember... There was a time where this group of like 30 engineers had been working for years to optimize the platform for ed edutubers, for ed educators, and all they really did was make it so that the suggested video section on the side would only show other educational YouTube videos, and they claimed that that took them years to do. And then I remember once I said, hey, uh, why don't we have... The technology to put different audio tracks on YouTube videos because it would be great to be able to you know have your videos in different languages and I remember the answer they gave me was well we don't have that technology yet it just hasn't been developed and I was like please you guys are drive you guys are creating self-driving cars and you're telling me that you can't figure out how to put multiple audio tracks in YouTube I know this is going to be very controversial but I really get the feeling that like a lot of these jobs at Facebook and Google their job is just to look diverse in order to distract from the fact that Google and Facebook's business model is horrific. As a matter of fact, if uh, you want to read more about that, I highly recommend uh, The Rise of Surveillance Capitalism by Shoshana Zuboff and Future Ethics by Chenid Bowles. Um, I'll put links to both of them in the description. But anyway, the point is, is that if you're going to make the argument that like a Uber driver or a hardware store worker doesn't deserve the dignity that a diversity coach that gets six figures at Google commands, then I think we have some pretty big fundamental disagreements because I'm telling you, there's like a cast of data priests at the top of Google and Facebook. These people have all the power. Basically, if you're not an engineer, your job is more or less bullshit at Google and Facebook. My point is, is that if PR reps and community managers and 
diversity specialists can command six-figure incomes and, more importantly, the respect of society, then so should Uber drivers, then so should retail workers, because they're doing as much, if not more, and their labor is producing as much, if not more, than those people. This actually gets me to something that I'm actually curious to hear your guys' thoughts about, and I've been thinking about it a lot. So in Finland here, nobody really makes any money, and what I mean by that is all the salaries are low, because everybody is buying into this federal pension. So basically everybody just spends the money that they make every month, because there's no point in saving money, because they know that by the time they retire, they're good. They're set. And of course, there's, you know, the free health care, free school, all that stuff. And also, it's considered one of the uh, best education systems in the world. So a question I've been kind of racking my mind about, and I'm interested to hear what you guys think in the comments. Would you rather have a million dollars in America, but have the notion that, okay, well, if I get cancer or some other horrific disease, a quarter of that might be gone? Or if uh, I need to send my kid to private school, like for example, I lived in LA and if I was planning on ever staying in LA long term or possibly raising a family there, the reality is in order for my child to stay competitive, I would have had to pay a ton of money to send my kid to a private school. So another quarter of that money is gone. And then God forbid anyone else in your family ever gets sick, you can understand how that million dollars might not be as comforting as, on the other hand, having only $30,000 in Finland, but knowing that if you ever got sick, whatever, it's free. If anyone in your family ever got sick, whatever, it's free. You don't have to worry about the quality of your kid's education because it's good. It's more than good everywhere. And now granted, yes, in the American example, you still have a cool half a million dollars to you know, have drugs and sex parties every weekend or whatever you want to do. And, you know, the $30,000 in Finland might not be able to afford that. But, you know, if that creates an environment where everyone around you performs their job with dignity and feels like that they have a purpose in life through their labor, it, it, it you know, it creates a different vibe. I have often, I said earlier that the vibe of Los Angeles was basically desperation and narcissism. It's definitely different here. And I'm not usually one of those people who's big into these kind of idealist notions like vibes. But, you know, as somebody who's dealt with mental health issues that I talked about in my previous video, it's hard not to admit that there might be something very relevant about it. Now, obviously, there are probably a lot of bad things about living in Finland. I'm sure it's like anything else. There are good things and there are bad things. And granted, I've only been here for two weeks, but I just wanted to share that insight that right now I feel like I am interacting just on a day-to-day -day basis with people that are much happier in their work and they really are much more proud in their work, whether that be making sandwiches or driving cars or just helping you down the aisle to point you in the right direction, which again, I think is noble work, stuff that needs to be done, and people should have that pride in it. People should have that dignity. They deserve it. They should be afforded it. And again, no, you know, if you're a community manager at Facebook and Google, I would just say that, uh, you know, maybe if you look down on somebody who works in retail or drives Uber, maybe you should think a little bit more critically about what value you're actually bringing to the world. Well, guys, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for listening. This is my first of the insights about my travels in Finland that I'll be sharing with you guys. Um, I apologize again for the potato cam. I actually got a new laptop and was expecting that this thing would have a 1080p cam, but it doesn't. So that's fucking bullshit. Um, I also said that I was going to make a South Park video, and I still plan on doing that. I just still need to read another book before I uh, actually get to it. And I want to thank everybody for all the really kind comments that they uh, left in my last video, which was essentially my two-hour therapy session with Nathan Lowe to tell the story of Wisecrack. Um, 
And I just want to say that I'm planning on having a lot of fun on this channel. I've got a collab with my good friend Ryan coming up in a couple weeks. Um, I've got some uh, interviews lined up with uh, Ben Burgess, who wrote the book uh, Canceling Comedians While the World Burns. So that's coming up soon. Um, as well as uh, I'm slowly catching up to Rick and Morty. I'm a couple episodes behind. But as you can imagine, my opinion on the show has definitely shifted over the years. Not to say that I don't like it, it's still one of the best written shows on TV, but I think I'm going to make a video soon that kind of like gives a little bit more of a realistic impression of my relationship with the show, because for those of you that follow me closely, you know that I'm much more of a South Park fan. So anyway, that's it for today, guys. Um, again, you know, do the old like, share, subscribe shit. Um, if you want more insights about the difference between USA and Finland, I'm going to be doing that as often as possible. If you like culture criticism and breaking down movies and stuff, of course I'm going to do that. I'm just waiting for that trailer for the next Matrix movie to come out. You know I'm going to do a React video when that thing comes out because i got a lot of stake in that thing being good. It better be fucking good. Um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and uh, thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope it will at least be entertaining. Thanks, guys.